my dearest Michael, our first date was amazing. You were such a gentleman. I loved holding your hand. I owe George my for introducing us. My dear Michael, my dear Michael. Thank you for inviting us over to Sunday dinner. I enjoyed meeting your mother. Although, uh, I'm not sure how she felt about me. Hopefully in time she will learn my dear Michael. As I lay here watching you sleep, I realize I'm in love with you. I'm whispering in your ear. I love you. My dearest Michael, I've written so many letters, but tonight I, I can't find the words. I guess that means it's time to stop writing for a while. Besides, tomorrow I'll be Mrs. Michael Wright. belong in this world, but those feelings won't last forever. One day, I'll be a bride with a pretty white dress and pretty hair with a church filled with all of my friends. I'll marry a handsome man with strong eyes who will be a hard worker, and he'll take care of me, and we'll have lots <laughs> of babies, lots and lots of babies. Catherine and Michael have prepared their own vows. My beautiful Catherine, here on this day I stand a man deeply rich. Above all other blessings, you are my greatest gift. I am honored and humbled by your commitment to me. And in front of God and in front of all these people, and in front of Pastor. I commit my life to you. Michael. You're everything I prayed for. You are beautiful and you take care of me in ways that every woman dreams of. You are my blessing. I wouldn't want to live this life without you. I long to culminate our dreams with a child born from this love. You save me in ways you'll never understand. My one desire is to spend every day from now until eternity loving you. This is the beginning of your lives together. Love each other through everything. I want everyone in this room to stand and extend your right hand to this couple. <clears throat> this is your covenant with them to support their union with the authority granted by the only true God I now pronounce you man and wife you may kiss the brush thank you pastor ladies and gentlemen I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Wright. Right. Well, you and 
Genesis right now as well. begin their lives. Although I introduced them, I like to think of myself as just a tool in a divine plan, you know? I know I'm a tool. I know people think I'm a but I, this, this is different. <laughs> um, from the bottom of my heart, I wish you both a lifetime of love, friendship, and happiness. Cheers, brother. Just to you guys. Thank you, man. Happiness. Cheers. Cheers. to them. Cheers. I, I hope you don't mind me coming. Oh, no. I gotta admit it's a bit unorthodox. Yeah, ex fiance to show it to you, right? I just wanted to stop by and, and say congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Are you happy? Excuse me? Are you happy? Happy doesn't describe what I feel. Well, good. That's what matters. <laughs> well, I haven't slept in a month, so I'm just stressed out, I think. I just hope your happiness lasts. We were happy once. We were happy once. You remember? I do remember. <sighs> yes, I remember. Enjoy your day. It's your day. Thanks, Claudia. Oh, baby. Mr. Ride, how are you? Morning, Julie, how are you? Good, good, good. You've got several messages on your desk, and one is highly urgent. Highly urgent. Yes. Let me guess. Mother dearest. Uh, sounds like it. Yep. David. All right. I'm doing all right. my maiden name. Uh, how, how can I help you? I'm Mr. Tynes from Firestone Insurance. Okay. May we speak? One moment. It's about the fire at the Smith's house. You were one of the foster children there, yes? Yes, but that was some time ago. Mayor? Okay, 
Case number X3052, March 17th, 2012. With Catherine Clark now. Right. But I said, what is this about? Oh, we're reopening the case. But I'm not sure why you need my help. That was almost 20 years ago. The Smith's son recently came into some money he hired me to investigate. He never believed that it was an accident. And the fire marshal's report was inconclusive at best, so. <laughs> but I'm still not sure why you need to speak to me. You were there. What I am specifically interested in is what happened before the fire. Claudia and I were upstairs doing our homework. George and Mr. Smith's son, Nathan, were downstairs with Mr. Smith watching the football game. That's it. Right there. The official police report states that you and Claudia were the first two out the house. Yes, that's right. How were the two of you down the stairs and out of the house before the guys who were downstairs by the front door? Now the TV was loud. Mr. Smith liked it that way. They had that TV on so loud that you couldn't hear anything anywhere else in the house. How'd you know about the fire? I could smell burnt wood. But no one else could. Okay, um, what happened when you went downstairs? Well, I told Claudia that I smelled something, so we went down the stairs. And when we got down there, the door was closed to the den where the guys were. Jack, we could hear the game was piercing through the walls. And uh, we went back to the kitchen, and that's where we saw the fire. And then we went down to the den and started pounding on the door, but they couldn't hear us. You know, Mr. Smith always kept that door locked. He, he didn't like to be disturbed. How'd you finally get their attention? We went outside, uh, around to the back, and we saw them through the window, just oblivious, just laughing and, and smiling. So Claudia finally threw a rock through the window, and then they tried to open the den door. The flames were everywhere. Is that when Mr. Smith broke the glass in the window? That's right, yes. And what happened then? Well, he helped George and, and Nathan out first, but by that time, the flames had risen all the way to the upper floors. And the ceiling came down on Mr. Smith. And where was Mrs. Smith at this time? She's working. She worked nights at the local diner. Okay, um, fire marshal's report says that the fire started in the kitchen, but no one was in the kitchen, correct? I, I don't know about that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's all I have. No one was in the kitchen, correct? I, I don't know about that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's all I have. But thank you. Mrs. Clark, I mean, I'm sorry. Mrs. Wright. Oh, one more thing. Your medical history. Yes. There's some indication that you suffer from some severe sleep disorder. I used to. But not anymore. Yes, that's right. That's all. Um, we have my card, so if you remember anything else, feel free to give me a call.
Mr. Haynes, update me on the Kohler project. Well, you'll be happy to know the Kohler project is all but done. The designs look absolutely amazing, and uh, I think the client will be pleased. You have a good team under you? I have a great team, sir, actually. They are great because of you. Wars are fought by soldiers, but they're won by thinkers. Thank you, sir. It means a lot. The firm is downsizing a bit to cut costs and bolster efficiency. We're trimming the fat, so to speak, becoming more lean. Okay. I want you to cut your team to two. So you're asking me to they go up three people? I thought the company, though, was doing pretty good. Three of Bill's clients have declared bankruptcy. And the Donner Building never got its funding. We all have to sacrifice. And I know I can count on you. Of course, sir. Absolutely. Additionally, I would like you to mentor my nephew, who I think has great potential. These are partner-level decisions, Michael. A man's character is revealed in famine, not in feast. Babe, I'm home. What you smiling about? <laughs> So I shut the dinner. I know I married you for a good reason. Babe, can you tell me how these idiots expect me to do the same amount of work with us? Well, any companies are cutting back all over, honey. It's all over the news. Yeah, but babe, we're already on the staff of the company. That makes any sense. Maybe it's a test. And I mean, I already had the most important projects. You know, I handle the most complex designs. All of that's me. And then he did that thing again where he dangles the partnership over me. You think that scares me or something? Michael, it's a game. Play to win. What would I do without you? You like that, right? And I know that from George. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Want anything? Oh, before I forget, remember we have dinner tomorrow with Bill from the firm. Eight o'clock, I think.
have to tell you, I cannot get Mike to shut up talking about you. And why should he? You know, if you ask me, a man should be singing the praises of his wife every chance he gets. Absolutely. Good. <laughs> I mean, Michael is incredibly blessed to have a woman put her dreams on hold, stay home, and see to his every need. Mike's got to be pulling in the big bucks. Yeah. yeah okay, I wish. It is not that easy in today's economy. How do you feel, Catherine? Uh, about... About not working, of course. I work every day. I cook, I clean, I... manage the household expenses. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Now that's <laughs> the real work, honey. What do you do, Cheryl? She's a blood-sucking attorney. Oh, Bill. <laughs> I wish I, I could get her to stay at home, but it's not uh, going to happen. Never. Yeah. Never it's going to happen. Never? Never. So, Bill, I'm curious. How many... How many they make you let go of on the team? No. Really? Yeah. I mean, why? Because Mr. Haynes said all the teams were downsizing, so... You have a team. First I've heard of it. Really? But... Guess you're gonna have to get back to work sooner than you thought, Catherine. Okay. It's enough, all over. Enough about Bye. work, Bill. So, Catherine, that dress is so nice. Oh, you. you. Check it, please. You think I'm a burden? Get a job, Michael. You want a job? I want a baby. Catherine. I want a baby. We talked about this. We said we will wait two years. It has not been two years. Well, it's just I'm ready now. It's been a year of waiting. Oh, I don't think I'm ready for that, babe. Michael. I'm serious. I got loads of stress at work. We just talked about it at dinner. The company's downsizing. They're not looking out for me, and babies cost money. We gotta be smart about this. It's not just your decision. Well, it's the last thing I want to talk about right now, okay? Okay, come on. Gotta get 
get you out of those wet clothes. several stages of sleep. One, which is a light sleep, which you drift in and out of. And then REM sleep, which is your deepest state of sleeping. And Sigmund Freud believed that dreams were safety valves for our subconscious desires. In other words, it allows us to act out things in our dream world that wouldn't be safe to do in the real world. You see, we have ponds in our brain that send signals that cut off neurons to our spinal cord which is why you normally can't move when you dream. A sort of temporary paralysis. Uh, I was standing in the rain. I mean, why wouldn't I wake up? Yes, well, sleep and dreams are just recently being researched effectively. But what we do know is that whatever you subconsciously believe to be real when you dream is I'm prescribing something stronger for you. And it should help you to sleep and stay calm. Are there any side effects? Not unless you're nursing. A little drowsiness from time to time, but other than that, you should be perfectly fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. What's up, little girl? Hi, George. Hey. So what happened? What do you say? He just prescribed stronger medicine. That's cool. Maybe you actually take it this time. I know. Hey, you got everything you've always dreamed about. Everything you've written in your letters. You got it. Don't screw it up. Take your medicine. Remember, you, me, and Claudia used to sit around and talk about who was going to get married first? <laughs> yeah, I do. I always thought it was going to be her because she was the prettiest. I'm the prettiest. No, I knew it was going to be you. You're always the best. You're the calm. George, an investigator came around asking questions about the fire. Who? Did you say that? I think I have his car. Mr. Tynes? What did he ask you? What does he know? Same story. It's okay, I'll take care of it. Love you, George. I love you more. Let's get you.
That was Miracle Holloway and LaMarco Smith from Marriage Chronicles soundtrack with What Happened. It's a sunny 80 degrees here in Southern California. Sure. This will be your only warning. The Smith case is closed. Walk away. You understand? Walk away. Tap the dashboard three times if you understand. gone up since the last quarter. Michael, you have done an amazing job with the Kohler project. Who did, in three months, what would have taken most five. But I am most impressed with what you have done with my nephew, David. And so, today, we want to reward you by promoting him to manager. <clears throat> there is no greater reward for a teacher than to see his student 
succeed. Thank you. Ma'am, it's Detective Snow. Can I speak to you, please? Sorry to bother you, ma'am. There's been an incident that I'd like to talk to you about. Well, how can I help you? Last year, were you visited by Mr. Tynes? <sighs> Says here that you were in the last cases he was working on. Uh, he was murdered last week. Oh, God. Where were you on the night of April 5th? April 5th? I was here with my husband. The entire night. Ma'am? Yes? Were you home the entire night? Yes, I was here with my husband. Do you know a George Carter? I do. What's your relationship? He's my foster brother. I need you to come on down to the station and make a statement. I just gave you a, a statement, and I can't leave. I have to stay and tend to my baby. Do you know where I could find this Mr. Carter, George Carter? No. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time, and um, here's my card in case he tries to contact you.
broke friend of me and I'm... It's nothing. Catherine, come on. You know what it was? I thought the doctor said the medicine would take care of that sort of thing. I stopped taking the medicine. You what? I can't take that medicine and nurse. You gotta take the medicine. It might hurt Samson. We don't want that, do we? family anymore, man. Man, I know I always lunch. I told you, I promise you lunch. I've just been busy. Look at all this crap, man. Projects, and deadlines, and... Wow. Well, I hope married life is treating you better than this, man. Catherine's just worried about you, so I thought I'd check in. Just worried about What do you mean? You know that girl loves you, man. She'll do anything to keep you happy. Yeah. Oh, gee. No offense. Uh... But what happens between me and my wife, I think it should stay right there between me and her. Ben, I just care about the both of you. So. Scholarship money didn't come through, so I had to loan you five thousand. You tell everybody about that. I mean, now you got a big job, you got a big office. So you want that back? Huh? You want the money back? You know I don't care about that. I care that you have a good job and that you take care of your family. Michael gave me a key. Well, I am sure it was for emergencies only. Well, when you didn't answer the door in a timely fashion, I just assumed something was wrong. No, I, I was I was cooking and then I, I laid down. I didn't I didn't hear you. You cook? Oh, I'm nice, domestic. Well, anyway, I'm here. Well, well I have a seat in in the loft. I'll be right back. Thank you. You seem uneasy. No, I'm fine. Are you sure? Have you slept? The baby has colic, and, and so I'm just up a lot. I'm so sorry that I interrupted your day, but since it doesn't seem to be the priority of you or my son that I get to see my grandson at all, I'm I'm sorry, but I just took matters into my own hands. 
But it's not how it is. This is right. Oh, my goodness. Look, can we get rid of the formalities? You treat me like I'm a stranger. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Lorraine. Thanks. Let's be honest. I, I, I think um, being a stay-at-home mother has, has been a difficult transition for me. <laughs> I guess it's tragic going from waiting tables to being taken care of. Let's be frank, Lorraine. Please. I know you think Michael made a mistake marrying me. I do. Well, I'm not the mess that you think I am. I pray you're not. Would you please bring me my grandson? Yeah. Oh, please stop crying, Samson. Okay. It's all right. Oh, Mama's so tired. I know. I know. Ah, here he is, gentlemen. Yes, here I am. I uh, apologize for first and foremost for my tardiness. Uh, I'm sure you will make up for it by wowing us with your new design. Absolutely. Just as, uh, as soon as I find it. I do thank you for your patience. <clears throat> Michael, we don't want to waste any more of these gentlemen's time, do we? Um, essentially, we're simply expanding on the on the previous designs that we talked about before. Pre Wait, I don't need it explained to me. I just want to see what the buildings will look like. I want to see the designs. Indeed, Michael. Where are the designs? The truth is, gentlemen, I had a. Uh, emergency this morning at home i'm sure we can all relate and i left the designs on the hard drive at home if i may michael uh, why not just call Catherine and have her email over the presentation two, two minutes miss james just give me two minutes thank you for your patience two minutes two minutes thank you sir
fuck happened, Mike? I don't know. Was Samson okay? Tell Mr. Haynes I had an emergency. Michael! Oh, 
contracts this firm has ever seen. So, Bill, what is this shit? Mr. Haynes will be forever in your debt. Mr. Haynes couldn't come down here man to man and fire me. He, he sends you. I fucking trained you, Bill. You think this is easy for me? This is going to give you a very nice package. That bastard owes me more than a damn package. Don't be unreasonable. I don't need Mr. Haynes' package. And fuck you, Bill. Take the package. Michael! Fuck the package. You didn't see it coming sooner. What? You got soft. You lost your edge. I lost my edge? You used to be focused. You know this game. It takes more than just talent. You need discipline. So that's why you had me train your nephew. Because hmm? I lost my edge. This is not some moral hyperbole. This is business. Bullshit! It's business! You fed me some... Bullshit about a partnership with no fucking intention, Mr. Haynes. I don't, don't owe you an explanation for anything. <whistles> hmm? Mr. Take Wright, the severance. Time to go, Mr. Wright. Yep. Take the severance. Cry to somebody else. I got you. Cry to somebody else. Get out. Time to go. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck off me. If I was in the street, I'd fuck your motherfucking ass up. Well, you're not. You're in my house. Well, you were.
slave for you, Mr. Haynes, eight years. And frankly, I'm shocked you didn't see it coming sooner. What? You got soft. You lost your edge. I lost my edge? You used to be focused. You know this game. It takes more than just talent. You need discipline. So that's why you had me train your nephew. Because hmm? I lost my edge. This is not some moral hyperbole. This is business. Bullshit! Business! You fed me some bullshit about a partnership with no fucking intention, Mr. Haynes. I don't owe you an explanation for anything. <whistles> hmm? Mr. Take Wright, the severance. Time to go, Mr. Wright. Yep. Take the severance. Cry to somebody else. I got you a cry to somebody else. Get out. Get the fuck out! Get the fuck out! Get the fuck off me! If I was in the street, I'd fuck your motherfucking ass up! Well, you're not. You're in my house. Well, you were.
You're stronger than this, baby. Get up. Come on now. Sam can come see about your guest. I knew you shouldn't have married her. Do you think God makes mistakes? I do not. Why would you want this to be my life? I'm a murderer. What's done is done. You've got to find the courage, no matter how hard it may seem, to move forward. I know he's, he's had some tough times. I'm cursed. No, you're not cursed. But we all have our cross to bear. I don't think I can bear this one. We never do. That's why along with the cross, God gives us the strength to make it through. You're gonna get through this. I've known you most of your life. I've seen, I've seen you drag from foster home to foster home. But you were always strong. You're uh, gonna need that strength now. It doesn't matter if the judge finds me guilty because I'm guilty in my heart. You're going to have to find the courage, no matter how hard it might be, to move forward. Finally over, huh? Is it? seems like a reason to celebrate. What, what are we celebrating? How fucked up I am that I would kill my own child and get away with it. Don't say that. Well, isn't it true?
I mean, wouldn't some kind of instinct kick in, whether I'm asleep or alive? Wouldn't I protect my child? Kathy, you've got to let it go. You've got to move on. I'm here to support you. Michael's here to support you. Michael can't stand me. No, don't say that. That's not true. Michael barely speaks to me. Kathy, you just got to give him time. Look, I'm sorry. I couldn't be there for you at the trial. I just got to lay low until things blow over. Mr. Time. Mm -hmm. Detective Snow. Catherine, it's my job to take care of us, to protect us, okay? You keep your mind on your family. You, me, and Claudia, we made a vow that we're going to stick together, right? Huh? No matter what, it's going to work out, okay? Don't worry. decided that change would be in my best interest. I see. Look, Miss Caney, I think um, I'm more than acutely qualified for the vice president position here. I think well, that that's a matter of opinion, isn't it? Absolutely. Pardon the disrespect. I just wanted to highlight some of my qualifications. That's all. All those are evident with a quick glance of your resume. MBA Stanford, Mata Cum Laude, and it seems that you get the job done, at least on paper. However, I'm not sure you're a fit. The bulk of your experience is at one firm. We are looking for someone a little more well-rounded. I'm sorry. Well, I'm aware that, you know, you're looking to fill management positions, and I'm more than willing to work my way back up again. That position pays $50,000 a year. That's a third of your previous salary. <laughs> yes, Miss Caney, I'm, I'm very aware of that. 
if given a chance. I'm sorry, but that would be really irresponsible of me. I think we're better off finding a more suitable candidate. Miss Kenny, please. Tally, can you send in my next candidate, please? Right away. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Wright, you'll receive a letter from the HR department. Thank you, Miss Ganey, for your time and consideration. What do you mean? What was what? What, what happened? What happened? Stop crying! I pray you're not. I pray you're not. Would you please put on my grandson? and stop crying, please. smoke up your house, man. Hey, 
he didn't come home for dinner. Yeah, I'm okay. Eight out. You told Claudia she could stay here? It was just for a few days. You didn't think it was important to tell me this? Uh, uh, well, no, I, I thought... Uh... You thought what? Thought I was on a need to know basis. I mean, it's it's, it's my house, right? I, I don't I don't know shit, do I? I didn't know about your sleep disorder and your telling all of our business to your friends around town. I mean, is that true? It is true. Of course, it's true. Why are you attacking? Because me? I don't trust you. I'm your husband, Catherine. I should know everything. But you know everything now. I know everything now. Okay, what happened at the Smith house? What? At the Smith house, what happened? There was a fire and he died. How did the fire get started? Did you start the fire? Did you have one of your sleep episodes? No. Huh? No. Did you fucking start the fire? Did you kill him? Did you fucking kill him? No. Did you kill him? No, no, George. George did it. He was raping me and Claudia, and then George started the fire. You didn't think it was important to tell me? It's in the past. It's over. It's in the past. Just like our son is in the past? <laughs> How could you say that? And you're asking me, you actually asked me to have another child? You should have told me. You should have told me. I'm your husband. Damn it. It wasn't her fault. Then whose fault was it? We told police that George was in the room with Mr. Smith and his boy. And the truth of the matter is, is George wasn't allowed to watch the games with them. Catherine and I locked the door. The TV was so loud, they didn't even hear us leave. Well, by the time we got outside, George lit the fire in the kitchen. And this is the first time I'm saying it out loud, and I'm sure it's her first time saying it out loud, too. And y'all think that makes it all right? I don't know. But I do know that at the time, it seemed like our only way out. Claudia, y'all are all fucked up. You fucking set a dude on fire. You're all fucked up. You wouldn't understand. <laughs>
It's about the fire at the Smith's house. It's at the fire. It started in the kitchen. Did you start the fire? An investigator came around asking questions about the fire. Who was murdered last week? I think George just did something terrible. Medicine isn't working. Did you have one of your sleep episodes? No. Did you kill him? Did you kill him?
Dear Samson, I think of you often, and I will never forget your smile. The way you would laugh at the strangest things. I miss your father dearly. Uncle George took the blame for killing your father, even though he didn't. The sacrifice he made, I can never put into words. I don't know what the future holds, but I will no longer try to write the future with my words. I will love you always. This is my last letter. <laughs>